1. My auntie and uncle used to live in Spain. They lived in Torrevieja and had a very close friend named Leonard Tolle. His son Eckhart wrote the semi-famous book The Power of Now. Anyway, I only had the joy of meeting Leonard once before his death. And I was very young, probably six or seven years old. As a result, I don't clearly remember this story myself, but my mum, dad, auntie and uncle, who were all present at the time, remember it very vividly and have told me about it on a number of occasions. Languages are my only skill in life. I'm British, but I was already starting to learn very basic Spanish from my auntie when she was living over there. Animals, fruits, the very basics of the language. But I seemed to be quite good at picking up grammar and pronunciations, despite being a young child. Again, this has been told to me by my family. Anyway, on to the glitch. When I first met Leonard in the hotel that he owned, he took me by the hand, looked me in the eyes, and then looked at my dad. Apparently the first thing he said to my dad was, We've met before, on a Chinese battlefield centuries ago. My dad is white British and has no trace of Chinese ancestry, neither does my mom or my auntie or her husband. This in itself may not sound too strange, an old senile man chatting nonsense. Leonard Tully was by all accounts one of the most intelligent and respected men my aunt and uncle ever met, and they talk very highly of him. He does not strike me as a man of flights of fancy. Flash forward to me being in secondary school, and it just so happens that my school offers Chinese as an option, I take it, as I decide that it sounds interesting. Despite having little to no interest in the culture, or the Chinese people at this stage of my life. Now, it is my only skill. I study Chinese at university, I live in China, and I have represented my home country in three separate Chinese-speaking competitions throughout my academic life. Is this considered a glitch? I find it very strange. I guess it could be a crazy coincidence, but there is little to no rationality behind this, at least in my mind. 2. I have never been good at explaining things, especially stories, so I will try my best here. I want to be crystal clear that everything I am about to share is true and correct, and there are three other witnesses who were with me when it happened, and my dad was also involved later on, so let's say four. I don't know if what I experienced was a true glitch or what, but it's puzzled all those involved ever since. Please bear with me as this will probably be rambly, wordy, and long. Growing up in the 90s, my dad was always big into recording home videos of my brother, sister and I playing or doing various school activities. He was the dad to always have his old school camcorder on standby, if ever a moment presented itself as a memory he'd like to keep. We always had a huge storage box of home videos and would watch them when we wanted to look back on fun memories. My mom and dad were divorced, and I spent most of my time at my mom's as I got older, just because she lived in the time where my friends were and my dad lived out of the country. One weekend, I was visiting my dad and I asked him if it would be okay if I could take a couple of his home movies home so I could show my mom. Well, I forgot to ever bring them back to my dad's, so they stayed at my mom's for years. Fast forward years later to when I was 16 and my dad's house burned down. It was a total loss and needless to say, all of our home videos were also lost in the flames. I remembered that I had the old home videos I had borrowed years prior at my mom's, and I gave them to him so he could go and have copies made at Walmart. Walmart put the copied videos on a CD and he went on his merry way. I said all that to say this because this is where it gets weird. My dad owns a restaurant that just so happens to be across the drive from the new house he had built after the fire. My boyfriend, my brother, his girlfriend, and myself ate at the restaurant and decided to go to the house to just hang out. At that point, it had only been a couple of years since the house burned down and we were feeling pretty reminiscent. I had the idea of watching the home videos and everyone agreed. We were watching the videos and it was to a part where I was on the deck of my old house at the age of about two, which would have been about 1994. I was running around with my brother and sister and you could hear my dad laughing in the background. We were all dressed to the nines with classic 90s wardrobe and all. If you know how old camcorders work, you know when going to the next video on the tape the screen will cut out and momentarily go black and white until the next section starts playing. 
Well, this happened still even though the new copy was on a DVD. Didn't think much of that, but instead of going to another video of us as kids, it went to two girls I didn't instantly recognize. They weren't our family members and we didn't instantly recognize the room they were in either. Keyword here is instantly. You could clearly tell the video of these girls was a much more current date than our old 90s videos, as the quality was much clearer and the attire they were wearing was much different. The girls were dancing in a green and pink room while posing in front of a mirror. Music was playing and they seemed to be just fucking off how girls do at a sleepover or whatever. When I looked over at everyone to ask what the heck was going on, my boyfriend looked horrified and says, Holy shit, that's my sister and her friend in her childhood house. For reference, he and his family had moved out of his childhood house just a year prior to this experience, so this was a place we had spent lots of time in. For a solitary second, I brushed it off as him just fucking around with me. But as I continued watching and looked closer, I realized that holy shit it actually was. I recognized her face and I recognized the layout of the room, and even though it had since been painted a different color, it was definitely her room. In the video, it appears she's about the age of 12. She is three years older than us, so as being 18 at the time would have put her at 21 years old at the time this glitch took place. How in the fuck did we get a video of my boyfriend's sister and her friend at the age of 12? And how in the fuck would it ever possibly get mixed in and crossed with our childhood home videos? We were all stunned and speechless. I immediately went back to the restaurant and got my dad, showed him the film and he was just as shocked as we were. We later called Walmart where the copies were made to ask about the likelihood of old films being intertwined with new ones and he assured me that it was exponentially rare, if impossible to ever happen. But even if that were the case, what the fuck chance is it that the people in the video would just so happen to be my boyfriend's sister? The entire thing to this day still freaks us all out. We have absolutely no explanation for what happened, and haven't been able to come up with any type of reasonable and logical explanation. Any thoughts? Edit. I forgot to mention that the recording of his sister and her friend only lasted a minute or two, then it glitched back to us playing on the deck in the 90s, and there was no glitch after that. Just wanted to let y'all know that. 3. Rewind back to September 2015. I was a freshman who had just entered high school two weeks prior. Already school was weighing down on me, and I'd been continuing a habit I had of going on walks to clear my mind. On this day, I'd been walking around a pond near my house. There's a trail that goes around the pond, and then the trail leads up to a set of abandoned train tracks on the other side, which sit about 15 feet above the path and pond below. After walking the circle, I was crossing the train tracks when I decided I wanted some ice cream. The fastest way to get to the ice cream shop was to take the path below the train tracks, but there isn't any way to cross the pond without going all the way back around, and being 14 years old, I decided that I could just jump from the tracks onto the path below and keep walking. Looking down from above, it didn't seem to be that far of a jump. So that's what I did. The next thing I remember after that was being half-conscious in an ambulance. Everything was extremely blurry and the paramedics sounded slightly panicked. I wasn't able to move either of my legs, so I think they were both broken. This scene continued on for a few minutes until we arrived at the hospital and I was wheeled into the emergency room on a stretcher. I only had a few minutes in emergency before I eventually lost all consciousness. And that was the last thing I saw. After I'd been unconscious for what felt like an hour, I opened my eyes and I was on the ground. I'd just hit the ground after jumping, but this time I was fully conscious. I hadn't noticed this before I jumped, but there had been a car parked watching me. I think they thought I was attempting suicide, it probably looked that way, and the people in it had jumped out and called an ambulance for me. The ambulance ride had been the exact same as it was the first time, and I was put into the same emergency room that I had died in before. The only difference between the two events were that I was fully conscious this time, and my injuries were much more minor. I was discharged from the hospital the same night with only stitches in my lip, a slightly fractured jaw, and a mild concussion. For a while after this, I assumed that the first scenario had just been a weirdly coincidental dream that I'd had while I was unconscious. 
I didn't consider it anything abnormal. It wasn't until a few weeks later when my mom told me that the people who had helped me said that I had been conscious the entire time. I hadn't been knocked out after hitting the ground or anything. So that entire scenario managed to happen in the few seconds it took me to hit the ground while I was still conscious. Anyways, I'm not very good at describing things, especially with how blurry this day was, now that it was years ago. But I'm 17 now, and I still have no way to explain what happened that day, other than I died and was given a second chance. 4. This happened about 6 years ago, when I was around 12 years old. Me and my best friend at the time, let's call her Jane, used to attend a writing course every week, and usually my mum would drive us. Now a little context. Jane lived near a retired football stadium, which had been converted into a training ground for the local football and running teams. I knew many people who used to train there, one of them being my cousin, who we'll call Stephen. Stephen is one year younger than me, and the only thing you'll need to know about him, for now, is that he loves football. And that is no understatement. Whenever he'd have some free time on his hands, he'd play football. In fact, he brought a football with him everywhere to make sure he'd be able to play if he got the chance. We're talking even at formal family gatherings. So seeing Stephen around the football stadium was definitely not uncommon. Although he did live a little far away from it, about 3.6 kilometers. Anyway, on the day of the glitch, my mum and I had just picked up Jane, and we were headed for the writing course. We just passed the old stadium and we were slowly driving away from it. When something catches me in my mum's eyes, it's Stephen, trotting silently down the pavement on the right of the road, still dressed in the clothes of his football team and with a big training bag over his shoulder. At one point we couldn't see his face, but there was no mistaking the clothing. The hairstyle or the sort of absent-minded type of walking Stephen was known for. Naturally, we slowed down. At first, Stephen didn't seem to notice us. As we got closer to him, my mother rolled down the window and yelled, Hey Stephen, what's up? You need a ride back home? Now my mother has always been quite generous with giving people rides, and she'd definitely given Stephen rides back home before too. My point is, neither my mother's voice or offer was an unusual thing for Stephen to hear. However, when Stephen heard my mother shouting, he whirled around, seemingly startled. He then took a few steps back, all while squinting fearfully at our car. I was in the front seat. Sitting on the right side of the car, this made me the closest to Stephen, with the very best view of the situation that was unfolding. I remember noting that his reaction was indeed a bit unusual before shrugging it off. However, it quickly became clear that Stephen was not going to answer my mother at all. As I looked at him again, I remember a faint feeling that something was a bit off, even though I had absolutely no way of pinpointing what it was that gave me that feeling. Physically, there was no telling him apart from my cousin Stephen, but his reaction was so untypical of him, and something else too. At this point, maybe 30 seconds had passed, but I remember it feeling like multiple minutes. Even though Stephen still hadn't said anything, my mom kept urging him to get into the car. And as she did so, Stephen's face got progressively more pale and afraid looking. There was no doubt that the situation was starting to get uncomfortable. I remember looking at Stephen one more time, then, without thinking, I turned to my mom and uttered the following words, Mom, that is not Stephen. My mom gave me a confused look before turning towards the boy again, who was still standing outside on the pavement. I remember thinking about how, if he was in fact a stranger, why hadn't he just ran away? The boy seemed almost frozen to the ground. Oh well, we'd stopped our car at this point, and I had opened my car door a little. As to seem inviting... As I reached to close the door, my mum cleared her throat, bewildered, and said, <clears throat> Okay, um, I'm really sorry, uh, it's just that you, you look exactly like my nephew, it's crazy, but I'm really sorry for this. She was about to roll up the window and drive away, when the boy on the pavement suddenly moved a little forward, cracked a small, apologetic, and just as confused smile, and said, It's okay, I'm a bit confused as well. It's just that my name is Stephen too. Not mentioning that the boy's voice was also a dead ringer for my cousins, all three of us laughed nervously at the situation for a moment. Then we drove away. Later that day, my mum phoned my uncle to ask whether Stephen had been joking with us earlier. Because if that was the case, he really got us good. 
My uncle didn't understand what my mother was saying at first, and told her that Stephen had been playing a football match in a neighboring town at the time, and that there was no way that we could have met him. Still, the boy we'd encountered had been wearing my cousin's football team's clothes, looked exactly like him, and shared, at least, his first name. After some investigating, we were able to find out that there was no other boy named Stephen on his team, or in the teams for older or younger children. No one had heard of such a doppelganger either, and we have never seen him again. Both my mum and my best friend clearly remember this incident. 5. For the sake of the girl, I am going to call her Macy. So Macy and I have known each other for about three years, and we met through mutual friends. Now for the first year of knowing her, we hung out maybe two to three times, during this time, I started to notice things and be very aware of my mind. I started to notice synchronicity happening to me every day, to the point it would scare me. If you don't know what synchronicity is, it's when something that's more than a coincidence happens and it is happening over and over. It started when I was FaceTiming the hottest basketball player at school. He was number 32 on the basketball team, and when I was finished FaceTiming him, it was 32 minutes and 32 seconds. I thought weird and just brushed it off. Well, that day I go to drive to my grandma's and the road, 32, was closed due to construction. Huh, weird again. When I got to my grandma's, it was 5.32, and every hour after that, 6.32, 7.32, etc., I would look at my phone. No, I was not waiting on the time to change, and no, I was not religiously looking at my phone. So we get to dinner around 8 or 9, and you can imagine that our table was 32, and our bill was $32. And ever since that day, 32 is everywhere. So fast forward to last year. I lost some friends and was super depressed. Randomly, Macy texts me asking if I wanted to hang out. This would be the fourth time we hung out. When I went over to her house, we instantly clicked. We liked the same music, same celebrities, everything. So after that, we hung out every weekend for months straight. And every weeknight we could. We were actually sad when we weren't with each other. So from December to about July, every free moment was shared with each other. And around February, I think that's when everything was, like, crazy. So we live about an hour away from our state capital, and we would frequently shop and go to dinner in the city. One night we got lost, but found a really nice mall. We decided to check it out, and we go in, and the first store we go to is the Tesla store. And ever since that day, we would talk about Teslas and Elon Musk all the time, and how much we wanted one. We live in different towns. She lives in a little more of a nicer town, and I live in a more poor to middle class town. So one day I texted her, I want a Tesla so bad, and every weekend I am around you, I get ads for Tesla on Instagram. And right as I say that, a Tesla pulls up right next to me in my shitty little town. And I was spooked like, <laughs> that's so weird. I mean, it is rare to see a Tesla around where I live. The closest charger is in the city, so about an hour to an hour and a half drive. Every time we would talk about a Tesla, we would see one or someone we would know would post about one at the exact same time. Then, randomly, my mom gets an email from Tesla, confirming a test drive on the next weekend that we plan to go into the city. One, she never set up the test drive. Two, it was way out of her price range. And still to this day, when Macy will randomly text me, a Tesla will always be near. The next big thing that happens to us is I will be saying something and she will tweet it, or I will be humming a song and she will be listening to it in Spotify. This happened at least once a day from March to July, and every day we would send each other a text when it happened. So many things like this happened all the time. Those are just the ones that stand out as crazy to me. Now we are at the end of July. We got into arguments, and stuff wouldn't happen anymore, like nothing at all. And by the beginning of August to about December, we didn't talk at all. And for both of us, nothing happened. Well, she was going through some stuff back in December, and randomly called me because she knew even if I hated her at the moment, I wouldn't ignore her. So we talked for about a week, and little things started to happen again, like the music, or we would be watching the same show or movies. So from that week in December to about two weeks ago, Nothing was happening. We unfollowed each other, we removed each other from our lives. And then randomly we find each other back in our lives. Not through mutual friends, not through anything except ourselves, and stuff is happening again. 
I just want to know if this is normal. Like, is she my soulmate? Does someone have any idea what is going on? I have had friends for ten years, and nothing like this happens with us. She's been the only person that has made me believe in God, or a higher power, because we are so connected on every level. So, help? Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to 5 True Glitch in the Matrix Stories, episode 64. Thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Well, the last my trusty Sony headphones have given up the ghost. Well, kind of, they're still working, but they've kind of broke in kind of a way that the earpiece connects to the rest of it. And it's uh, in such a place that if I glue it, it won't hold for long. So I'm going to have to go browsing for another set of headphones, which I really didn't want to have to do, because I like these ones, and you just can't get them anymore. <sighs> so that's what I'll probably be spending some of tonight doing. Then if I'm in the mood later, I might play some games and things. We'll, we'll see. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.